Hey folks, how you doing? It's uh, E Chip with Contentment Channel. It's a beautiful morning, and uh, uh, Robert's got some work to do today, so she's not coming with me. But we're in Rusty, and uh, today we are headed up into the mountains to uh, see if we can pick out some suitable trees for timber uh, to build our off-grid home. <laughs> So I'm, I'm almost where I need to be. I got to meet the state forester. He and I are going to go up into the mountains together. I don't know if I'm riding with him or following him. Okay, so met with the forester. That's him ahead of me, following him up into the mountains. I'm, he's going to let me stay up there and mark and sound some trees. So he'll be up there with me for several hours, uh, at least a couple hours, um, marking some trees. And then we'll sign a contract and uh, prepare to cut. This road is really rocky. There's some near basketball sized boulders in this road, but uh, we're about to oh, probably 8,500 feet. We're starting to get into some taller pine now, mixed, really most of it mixed with some aspen and uh, some uh, pinion pine, but uh, starting to get in some of the larger pine getting some of the spruce, some fir, some Engelman spruce, that kind of stuff up here, but uh, we're going even higher. This, these hills are mostly rock. You can see that basalt up there on the outcropping. That's what we're driving over now, it's just so bumpy. We're probably somewhere between 8,500 and 9,000 feet above sea level here. Uh, still very very rocky terrain don't let this grass fool you it's almost all rock underneath it okay so the road gets worse from here <laughs> and I as I drive it I am wondering how easy it's gonna be to drive dumpy up here and particularly back you know being loaded up with a load of logs because you know the bed on dumpy is pretty high and uh, you got a load of logs on top that's a pretty high center of gravity. If you, you know, if you hit a hole in one of these roads and break a spring with all that weight on it, you could tip the truck clean over. There's a pretty little reservoir here. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just really, really rough. Okay. So the forester and I just looked at this one and the stand here. And there's some, you can see there's some dead trees and there's some beetle kill. Uh, sounded a few of them most of the trees it's going to be hard to salvage any timber from they're better mostly for firewood so we're going to go look at another so certain areas of state land or bureau land management land or state trust land or federal trust land uh, you can obtain a grazing permit or a contract uh, from I think they usually last 10 years or something like that where you can bring your cattle out here to graze they limit the number of cows or sheep you can have out here so so as to prevent overgrazing this part of the state doesn't get as much rain so the trees don't get as big they're still big to me but uh, they don't get as big and then once you start cutting on them you cut away all the rot you cut away all the checked wood it doesn't leave you as much there, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as you might think. And what's left would just go to firewood or, or mulch or something. So I'm going to go to a different part of the state up to the National Forest land, about 30 miles away. And uh, the forester pointed out several areas up there that uh, we could log if we want to. So I'm going to go look at those. He said there are some larger trees up there that may be good. If not, if we can't find anything in Beetle Kill, then we may have to uh, sign a contract for green 
uh, forest harvesting, which back here where I just was, there's a decent stand of some green wood there. A lot of ponderosa pine, which are big, fat trees at the base um, and would give us a lot of what we need. Um, but they, they have an area they want to thin out. They don't want it so thick. And uh, so, you know, who knows? There might be an option there for us. We'll see. We're driving along here and I saw, and there are a lot of these out here, uh, a currant bush, currants. The berries are edible. This is called the powdered currant. And uh, they're not really tasty until they turn dark. But uh, some of them turn dark. Uh, some of these have turned darker in this area already. I don't know why that one hasn't. Here's another bush. Doesn't have anything on it. I wonder if that's a male or something. But uh, yeah, little roadside sunflowers. You'd be amazed at how many edible things there are out here, right along the roadside. It's kind of cool. Might be nice to try and make some current jelly sometime. Sweet, but, or what is it, powdered or wax current? I think it's wax current. So, it's later in the day now and I went and stopped and picked up Robber. And uh, she's with me here in the mountains now. We're looking at another place that the forester suggests that he didn't come with us, but he said, just come up here and if you see something you like, let him know. But uh, we were just walking the forest floor here and we noticed strawberries, uh, mountain strawberries with fresh fruit on them. Show us the fruit. Little, little babies. Little, little baby strawberries, wild strawberries. You know what, you know who likes strawberries, Robert, in the mountains? Bears. Bears. I wish. That's like on my bucket list. To be attacked by a bear? To see one up close in the mountain. Wow. But we're uh, right near the peak of a uh, very tall mountain here in Colorado. It took us a while to get up here. The road wasn't bad. Uh, a lot better than the accessibility at the other couple of places that we went and looked at earlier today. But it is steep and it's up here high. Here, here are the strawberries, these little Did plants. You find some more? No, I'm, I'm looking. Looking to see if I can see some more uh, fruit. Yeah, there's one. There's a fruit on the strawberry vine right there. As you can see, almost all of this is beetle kill uh, trees. And most of these are Engelmann spruce. There are a lot of trees to choose from, so we'd have better success uh, finding what we need here. So when you're hunting for this beetle kill pine, you have to be very selective. Um, as you can see, after a while, the trees stand dead for too long. They begin to check, like this one. A big, big, long split that goes probably all the way, most, yeah, all the way up that tree. So that is definitely not a candidate. <laughs> um, besides the bark's falling off, we know it's been rotting for a while. They're not good for much with firewood. Every single one of them has a check. Running up the line. They've just been standing dead too long. And th there's no way to use them at all. Oh, it would take too much work. They'd because split. The check, the check runs sometimes diagonally up the tree. Uh -huh. And so you would play havoc trying to get some salvageable lumber out of it, you know, without, without hitting the check. But, oh, see. I see. See that? Yeah. But yeah, you know, if you want to get a six by nine piece of timber out of that, you can. Well, because I can't zoom in, it's not a very good image. But there's a mountain right there with more beetle kill, beetle kill, beetle kill, and some dead aspens or something over there. But it's nice and smoky. The smoke from California is coming in. <coughs> so, these, you got the holes from the beetles. You got these things here where the pitch and sawdust has come out. That's from the beetles knocking it out. Um, there's a little ball 
of pitch that the tree, here's another one, that the tree tied, tried to exude to protect against the beetles, but it didn't work. The tree still died. Let's check out the bark here. Let's see what shape this is in. What shape the wood is in. Those quarters here. When you get to the sapwood, if you can stick your, it'll tear off real easily with the with the axe. Then it's probably not very good. But I can actually still smell oh, sap. Oh, I can smell it. This I, is this tree smells good. The tree is dead. I mean, it's gone. But this may be good salvage wood. So, <clears throat> It's starting to sprout out down here at the bottom. Though. It's nice and straight, and it'll come in handy for some smaller stuff. Okay. Well, this is day two of our searching for uh, wood to build our off-grid home. And uh, I'm in a third location. Visited two locations yesterday, one with a ranger, actually two with a ranger, and then a third one with Robert and I that the ranger suggested. And uh, it's a different part of the mountain range. Um, we're at about, I don't know, 9,000 feet. And uh, you can see here mostly ponderosa pine, which are great. They're, they're, what, they're part of what they call the hard pine category. Great for construction, but they're really naughty. Um, but uh, we are looking for beetle killed lumber, dead lumber. And I just noticed some rose hips another edible plant up here in the mountains this is uh, i think it's called mountain briar uh, it's a species of rose and uh when the when the rose blooms and the bloom dies off it produces this little hip which is a seed pod basically it's a fruit and uh it's edible it's very sweet let me taste one i had to get the flower off it mm. That one's not so sweet. <laughs> it must not be ready yet. I think they eventually turn like a brighter pink. Or a, these are more red. But I think they eventually turn pink. And um, as I recall. And they are very sweet. I know that uh, you know they're used to make rose water. And you can put them in mixed drinks. And things like that. But they are loaded with vitamin C. They're edible. And they are tasty when they're ready. So, here's another uh little rose briar or rose hip uh but then also i was noticing this little tam sort of tam juniper uh i've never seen these in the mountains before but i noticed these juniper berries juniper berries are good these aren't dry yet but mm, they smell good they're great to go in um oh things like uh soups stews cider uh there are several recipes that take them Oh, we've got these quaking aspens as they're called uh, okay this tree uh, again fairly straight but the bark's coming clean off of it. it has been for a while it looks like when I smacked it with a saw uh, with the uh, axe it just caved in right there this tree's rotten it's too late well here's what this beaver's been busy doing I mean this beaver's taking down trees that are a foot in diameter <laughs> at the base and uh, I think all of them are aspens, almost all of them. Looks like Bubba was here. Look at this. Got an entire mountainside of dead trees. The live ones you see in there are not spruce, they're fir. They're not attacked by the beetles. good scouting this timber is turning out to be a lot harder than i thought it was going to be i mean with as much with as many millions of acres of beetle kill timber as is out here you would think the forest service would want people to take it you know um but they certainly aren't making it easy uh 
in this area they're telling me that you can only harvest within 300 feet of the road but they don't say you know they don't specify which roads uh at least they haven't so far um and then you know but the stuff along this road anyway is not accessible i mean it's really <laughs> steep you either go way down the canyon you know for 300 feet to find a and then hope that you can skid it back up the hill uh, or you bring it down the hill from the other side on the other side of the road and take the chance of it getting in the road and uh, you're having to dispose of it quickly because at least this road has got a little bit of traffic in the summertime and summertime is the only time you can come up here and do this because when the snow falls it's impassable so times of the essence but but then the stuff that is accessible nice and level and you know, big stands of lots of trees, uh, they tell you you can't go in there. This water is so good, I'm gonna fill up my cup. That water is crystal clear. Woo! It's good stuff.